The educational part of our program include those uh, uh, workshop topics, but additionally what I've done is uh, I've ensured and, and insisted that the guys make sure they have a social security card, mm -hmm. make sure they have a library card. They said, why would I need a library card? Well, some of the guys are homeless. Mm -hmm. So if not no more than on a cold day, you have somewhere to go where it's warm. Mm -hmm. And maybe while you're in there, you might read a book. book. Okay. You know, uh -huh. Or in the summertime, the same yeah. scenario. Mm -hmm. If it's, air, it's hot outside and you go into an air-conditioned building, and that's a possibility. Also, I have them register to vote. Mm -hmm. You are uh, one of the citizens of Nashville. This is one of your responsibilities. You mean I'm that important? Yes, you are. So we insist that they register to vote. And there are some who come in who may have some uh, problems where they, they're not eligible, but we are going to mm -hmm. let the agency let us know that they are not eligible. Mm -hmm. If a man is sick, he becomes the ward of his family mm -hmm. or becomes the ward of the city. So we try to insist and influence them to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. If I have a toothache, I don't have the money to go get a tooth pull. Mm -hmm. So in the program, we have a network, network with uh, Matthew Walker. Mm -hmm. Matthew Walker has, will give them a free health mm -hmm. situation. And so in a real sense, you're able to, uh, from your base in the Employment Security Department, you're able to reach out into other areas and find other services that these persons might be able to become involved in. I, I understand you, uh, you, you talked about the homeless population. Uh, do you find a large number of uh, people that come to you are actually homeless persons? And, and, and what, what are some of their uh, situations when you find that? Uh... When a ho homeless person comes into our program, uh, they will have been referred by the human services. Mm -hmm. uh, they have gone there to get food stamps. In getting food stamps, one of the criteria are that you must be involved in one of the programs that are prevalent. Mm -hmm. So survival skills, they are mandatorily assigned to survival skills. So when they come in, a lot of them do not have permanent housing or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them do not have, are from out of town mm -hmm. and don't have ID. That is the biggest fallacy I find in men walking around the streets without positive identification. Of the Tennessee people, I ensure that they get a birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Why? because a lot of our, us as men, our parents, have our birth certificates. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to prove who you are? You, are. Mm -hmm. you don't. Mm -hmm. So I get that as a positive proof of who you are. So you're finding that that's a, that's a real problem in terms of a large number of persons not having any, not, not much less driver's license right. or anything, less, but, but no real identification no real as identification, to right. uh, how to identify themselves. And uh, you know, like you say, there are a lot of guys who may have problems with driving and they don't have driver's license, but they're is a driver's tenancy ID that they're mm -hmm. supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Well, we insist that they also get that. Mm -hmm. And once they procure these uh, employment tools, I call them, once mm -hmm. they procure those, you can see, you can sense that they have a f better feeling about mm -hmm. themselves. Their low self-esteem mm -hmm. has been improved. What? Mm -hmm. Because they have proof. Mm -hmm. And so the, it, it's a whole conscious raising, a self-esteem kind of thing that you're trying to uh, instill in, in, in many of these uh, persons who are dealing with survival skills. Yes, the educational material that is in the program is like following a script, that's fine, we do that to, mm -hmm. the, to the word, but however, additionally, those are the things that they find that mm -hmm. here's a person who cares. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that everybody else haven't been, but uh, men have uh, fears of failing as a man, as a father, a as a brother, as a person, as a person who didn't get enough skills or education. Mm -hmm. They have fears of this being found out. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. don't worry about it being found out. You've got to do something about it and go from here. We've mm -hmm. got training programs that you've got to get involved. We're going to let you know where they are. Mm -hmm. Now, what about literacy? I, uh, uh, and, and, and this, I think, is a very, very uh, important element dealing with uh, employment uh, security. What about some of your literacy programs? And what do you find in, in, in your department? Uh, in terms of the opportunity that people have to become literate. A large number of our people, for example, drop out of high mm -hmm. school and et cetera and et cetera. But uh, what are we doing in, in terms of trying to deal with that? Well, one thing, I'm blessed. I'm in special projects, which handles the food stamp uh, carryover from the Department of Human Services. And our representatives down there, Flo Parsley, Deborah Owens, uh, all the other people that work there, they have the option if they find a literate person, mm -hmm. they have and they do send them on to illiterate education or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's a good mm -hmm. uh, option for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you think that uh, with this program, what about this program? And uh, you indicated that uh, 
the survival skills program started in Kansas, mm -hmm. and that this is one of uh, the several pilot projects. Uh, what about uh, taking such a program, and especially since you uh, indicated that uh, you're dealing with the homeless population, with people who have dropped out of high school and et cetera, uh, what about uh, the cost effectiveness of such a program to apply it on a much larger scale? For example, uh, certainly you might be able to apply it in Nashville, but what about uh, throughout the uh, nation? Uh, is, is this one of the many possibilities that we can think about when we have to deal with the 40 and the 50 percent of unemployment that we find in many of our communities? Why don't you, that's what I want you to speak to, okay, speak well, those kinds of issues. What we found is uh, Dr. Linda Thurston indicated at our last conference that there are now 24 states that have got survival skills uh, under, under go. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the male situation is growing vastly, and I look forward to the time when uh, it'll be in every major city. I guess the biggest problem right now is they're only attacking the uh, local major cities in, in the major states right now, but I'm sure the rural areas, mm -hmm. they're going to want programs That's such what, yeah, as this okay. to mm -hmm. help them all mm -hmm. of the total. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it'll expand, I'm sure. And so there's a tremendous possible. What about uh, the uh, staff in, in, in such a program? I mean, is this uh, program cost effective in terms of uh, the number of dollars you have to put in for professionals to uh, deal with uh, the uh, people who need these skills? Well, I'm not, you know, up on the, the financial situation of that, but I am up on uh, giving my own, my caring, my concern well, for Well, do you have people. a large number of people, uh, staff members in your own uh, department compared well, to the number of people you're trying to help? The only thing we have right now is I do the uh, facilitating for the males in Nashville, mm -hmm. and Renetta Swanson is a facilitator for the females in our particular uh, office. Mm -hmm. And so in reality, uh, uh, you really have just two persons who are deeply involved in that program, yet you're dealing with a in large... In employment security. In mm -hmm. employment security, yet you're dealing with a large number of other folks, mm -hmm. and you have access to uh, some of these other offices uh, that you can make re make referrals to uh, in dealing with these persons. Well, I, I, you know, I'm pretty sure it's depending on how the contract is written as who the clients are. Mm -hmm. Human services is the is the parent uh, mm -hmm. operator of that situation, but, you know, I'm sure that, that it can expand. Mm -hmm. I, I do envision survival skills from the way it, it is now high schools. Mm -hmm. With the youngsters coming out of high school, they're not prepared. Mm -hmm. And I also see a possible uh, direction, directional move uh, going toward the prisons, mm -hmm. going to help some of the people coming out of the drug programs. So this is a powerful program, mm -hmm. uh, and especially for this sect of people, the, the males, our prisons are overcrowded, mm -hmm. and especially the males, and we've got to do something. Mm -hmm. We've got to address the issue, and I'm, I just applaud the efforts of the Department of Human Services and Employment Security for addressing that issue mm -hmm. now, not waiting mm -hmm. until it really becomes mm -hmm. something bad. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so there's tremendous possibilities for this program. I oh, think yes. you've already you've indicated the prison uh, population and there are a large number of minorities involved in that, uh, in the prison population, and uh, there are many other areas that you can become involved in with this program. And see, the other thing is that if you really look deep, uh, uh, this program could probably be vested into the early childhood, of especially in the low income, maybe the males who are missing. Mm -hmm. If we can get some good, strong male models, role models, to go into the schools at mm -hmm. early ages, mm -hmm. this can improve the educational growth mm -hmm. of a lot of the young blacks particularly. Mm -hmm. Because I'm getting some feeling from, this is feedback from guys in the group, a lot of the, especially the male blacks who come mm -hmm. in, they have indicated that they had problems in early childhood mm -hmm. in school. Mm -hmm. In that, uh, as they began, they didn't know an answer, and mm -hmm. by saying the wrong answer, they were chastised. Mm -hmm. Not knowingly, a lot of teachers said, no, that is not the wrong answer. Or fellow students, you didn't know that, you big dummy. Mm -hmm. So what happens, and then these guys are telling me now, they're holding this all these years, that... Mm -hmm. There was that instance of that, rejection. Yes, that, that uh -huh. rejection. I don't want to uh -huh. get again, so uh -huh. what I'll do, I'll be quiet uh -huh. so that I don't get that again. Uh -huh. I'll be quiet so I don't remove, I don't have to uh -huh. remove the doubt that people think I don't know. Uh -huh. So we need to address the issue of the, the males in our society and try to help them get them back initiated mm -hmm. in the family life. Mm -hmm. That's where our worth is mm -hmm. going to be. The young children who are coming up today, they need to see some male images. You know, over these last uh, five minutes that we have here, uh, Mr. Stevens, let's look at uh, some of the things that are happening in, in the state uh, dealing with employment. Because I think that uh, in Nashville here over the last uh, several months, We've had indication that there's going to be a bicentennial mall, 
that there's going to be an arena, that there's going to be uh, improvements at Meharry because of the uh, merging, et cetera. And we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars that will be there. Yet we find that there's a tremendous unemployment among uh, many people in the inner cities. And uh, there are a large number of folks who need these kinds of uh, survival skills. So what can you, uh, uh, within your program, say to people this morning about uh, what we ought to do in terms of trying to uh, tie in to some of that uh, money that's going to be available? Well, first of all, that has to come from on high, of course, and our people who come in who aren't skilled, you need to find some skills that, first of all, you have to be interested mm -hmm. in a particular skill. And there are some genuine good apprenticeship programs that are available down at 909 on 8th Avenue. They've got the, the apprenticeship, a log of apprenticeship programs, and very few people are mm -hmm. inquiring about them. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they don't know. But if that's mm -hmm. the case, they need to go no. and find mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And the jobs that I'm sure a lot of jobs are going to be opened up when these constructions of these new entities that uh, make our city mm -hmm. what we want it to be, that these, this set of our people are going to be touched. That if a person has a, a, the slightest interest in bricklaying, for example, that, uh, that you're telling that person this morning that there's an apprentice program brick, brick in the uh, state of Tennessee that they can learn those, oh, yes. Oh, yes. those crafts and be prepared for those. Talk, speak to that because... Well, the, the thing is, uh, and I urge people everywhere, that if I don't know something, do not be ashamed to search for the answer. You've got to be a resourceful person in society today to be able to get somewhere. If you're mm -hmm. not resourceful, you will not have an opportunity to have access to all the options. Mm -hmm. Go ask mm -hmm. for help. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, now, what if they wanted to find out more about uh, what's going on the, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, survival skills and et cetera? What, what, what would you uh, tell them to do this morning? Well, they can call our office. Our number is 3-741-2913 mm -hmm. to get more additional information on that. And then, of course, they would have that information. Out of, uh, what about uh, finding out about some of these apprenticeships? programs that, that we They can call the unemployment office down at 8th Ave, 741-3626. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you, you mentioned 901 building. The 901. That's 901, 909, 909. 8th Avenue, uh -huh. right down by the uh, Goodwill. Uh -huh. And now, uh, during the last minute or so that we have, uh, are there any, two minutes that we have, uh, uh, are there any final comments that you'd like to make in terms of this program, in terms of the kind of support that uh, you're getting for this program, and especially in terms of the future uh, uh, that you see for what you're doing now? Well, first of all, I'd like to say I'm just uh, elated that uh, our Commissioner James Davenport allowed me to be involved in such. A, it is my life work. I've been doing this type of work all along. I envision the program gro growing. Uh, Senator Thelma Harper came and uh, allowed us to have our graduation mm -hmm. at the Senate Chambers. And what a beautiful feeling that these uh, gentlemen got going to the Senate Chambers. I at that, in that arena, it gave them an uplifting, it gave me an uplifting just to have the opportunity to expose them to this. And I've gotten indications from our Commissioner Davenport that the program will be continued. And uh, we're waiting for the other uh, data and documentation to, to substance and to back up whatever the funding will be. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And, and, and let me, over this last minute, thank you, uh, Stevens, for coming by and giving us that information about Survival Skills for Men uh, program. Uh, we also understand that there's a Survival Skill for Women, and the next time that we uh, talk to you, we'll uh, have uh, another person to come back and, and talk about that uh, program. But in the meantime, we certainly want to uh, thank you and uh, the commissioner for allowing you to uh, come down and give us that information today. And I'm almost sure that it will be very, very important in the lives of some persons who need these uh, skills desperately. And let me thank you for coming by and giving us that information. And let me encourage you to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.